impressed that Evan, Evan been winning as well against the big six. That underlines what a good weekend for Manchester City. 12 points clear. Now with everybody having played 26 down to Chelsea, Liverpool are about to play at Sheffield United. Uh, they won't make any progress now. That point for Chelsea means that uh, 43 will only give them sixth at best. Uh, Everton play tomorrow night against Southampton. Spurs won today, 4-0 against Burnley. Replacing Villa in eighth, courtesy of goal difference. Arsenal 3-1 winners at Leicester into the top half. Uh, this, our four. Yeah, it's unheard of, huh? I mean, in, in there's a situation that they're in, in right now, you know, with the many injuries and, of course, also with personal uh, problems, uh, for example, with Alison Becker, you know, the other day. Um, so, yeah, they have their, uh, they have their uh, own issues at this stage. But four in a row, that's, uh, that's unlikely for, uh, for Liverpool. But that's the stage that they're in right now. And they have to come up uh, to, uh, with something, you know, to get a win and to get the engine going again because it's lacking right now. Do you think either of those two coaches that, that, that we've just see, seen their teams play will take much away from that game today. What will be the things that please them? Completed passes? <laughs> passes sideways? I know where you want to go to, but I think the, 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 most ple the, the most pleased that they can be is that they didn't lose the game. That's, that's, what it. I, that's, that's it. That's it. I think that's it. And of course, they, you know, especially Tuchel and the way how he is and the way how he set up his teams is always to play and try to win games. But I mean, both sides, they didn't, they didn't really play to win games. They really whatever played happened, to not, whatever not lose. Whatever happened to the, the basic um, football belief that it was about creating chances and scoring goals rather than completing passes? I think it's the evol evolving of the of the game at this stage. You know, of course, like uh, so we should count the passes, and if you no, no, no. if you get to a hundred, that's a goal, is it? No, no. <laughs> that's going to be the new loss of football. Well, I, I'm beginning I mean, to wonder, Nigel, be... because I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> chances created. How many? Giroud first half. There were two cro two yeah. crosses. Yeah. Two crosses in 90 minutes from Chelsea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. That was it. That was it, yeah. And that's, that's the thing, you know, in, in the, especially in the bigger games. You know, the, the, the lack of effort to create chances is just staggering. Here we are, two crosses. Here's the first, which Giroud nearly gets on the end of. And this was, this, this was what Chelsea was doing, you know, way to... Way to uh, way less than 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 that we've seen from them normally in the games that they've been playing. They have to put, especially when you play with a, a player like Giroud. He needs crosses. Mm. He needs bodies in the box. He needs to be on the end well, of it. Well, that will require was, you then to typical. get the ball into the last third mm. to create the opportunity to cross it. But but then, I mean, James here. Mm -hmm. I watched him since the whole of the second half. Yeah. Pass the ball forward twice. And it's a great cross. Yeah, in the 82 minute. It was it was. It was a lack of giving crosses, a lack of the intensity and a lack of like really having the effort to go in the final third. And, you know, of course, United is, is defending well. Um, and what I said, both teams are play, were playing not to lose well, the Well, which game. player would... Uh, Kante, terrific, had Fernandes in his pocket for yeah. 90 minutes. Yeah. Other than him, who's going to leave that pitch today and say, do you know what? I did really well. I left nothing out there. I think everybody played quite steady. It was not like it was not like every so, so other players had a, a great game. But what you said, I think Kante was amazing. The way how he defended, the way how he was playing for me was the man of the match. But that says something about the whole the the, the setup about this game. Because normally when somebody is a man of the match, it's going to be at the other side of the pitch and the, in the box or the at the, the, the front men to create chances, who scoring goals. And that's what that says something about the lack of intensity, the lack of effort in these kind of games. And what I said before as well we need people in the stadium i agree and i do believe to give the point. give that extra yes. stimulants to the players because like this if you watch but that's like not this, going to change the attitude of the coach too much and how he wants to play is it whoever that might be of course of course but i mean both teams have a game plan right United comes to Chelsea knowing that Chelsea, in the, in the way how they've been playing on the Tuchel, are always having the most part of the, uh, most part of the game, the ball, the ball possession. So they're set up in a defensive way, the way how we always been set up. So they're waiting for the counter-attack just to go forward. So you don't expect United to dictate the game. Chelsea, by, 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 that far, uh, by, that, by that end, are trying to play the game as well. But they, they, were, they were playing against a team like United, who were defensively very strong. And they were, they were failing to create how, chances. How do you think that would play with Manchester United fans if Mourinho served that up? You mean uh, when he was uh, yes. a United, an United yes. manager? Yes, when, when, he, when he was sacked by Manchester United, a number of the class of 92 yeah. were very public and said, look, never again. 
must anybody come to Manchester United and impress upon us their style of play. Right. We have a DNA. And, mm -hmm. and we need a proper Manchester United man mm -hmm. at the helm in order to deliver it. Mm -hmm. Well, Solskjaer's not. It's, it's, yeah, of and hasn't. No, I mean, it is hard to see the DNA of United at this stage because normally United, if you talk about United, it's all about attacking football, 4-3-3 system, and always go forward or 4-4-2, but always with attacking-minded football. Of course, the setup that United has on the Solskjaer as well as on the Mourinho is, is, is actually the same. So why, does, why, does, why is Solskjaer allowed to, to deliver that and Mourinho wasn't? Who knows? I don't know. You can, can, you, can you tell me why? Because for me, it's, yeah, one, it's, it's one of them. Exactly. One of them is a Manchester United man. He's he's one of their own. And Mourinho wasn't. But Mourinho delivered them two trophies. Of course. So there is a big difference already there between Mourinho and Solskjaer. But the fact that you already said, I think because he's a United man, he get a benefit of the doubt. That says a lot. And that's not how this United team has to be set up. The, the club has to be set up. The club has needs to have a proper DNA. And if, if Solskjaer is the right man at this stage, I don't know. I mean, clearly he is because he's still second in, the, second in the league. But, I mean, to go forward, to make United a proper contender for the, for the Premier League title again, they need to change the game up. Mm. Is there anything in the influx of the foreign coach? You talked about football evolving. Mm. Uh, has it, and if it has, where has it gone to underneath the foreign coach? Um, I, I think, you know, the image that we have from English football, and especially when I look back, when I was younger, and look back to the, the, the English Premier League, it was, it was always long ball, second ball, and just try to come into the opponent's uh, box as soon as possible, just to create chances. Ah. Now, of course, yeah. Now, of course, the game evolving and having foreign coaches in and also looking to have foreign players inside of the Premier League, the game is evolving in a way that it's been playing in a setup that we've seen in other leagues, Italian league, Spanish league, the Dutch league, you know, the way how they've been So the foreign coach used to watch with envy, as you did as a child, mm -hmm. the English, what well, initially football league and then Premier League and thought, I want a piece of that. That's really exciting. That's good fun. That's, that's what makes it the most successful league in the world. Mm -hmm. And when they got there, was it the they most brought their game with them. Was, was it the most successful league? We're One, talking without, about 10, 20 question. years ago? It was the most successful league. 10, 20 years ago. The most ago. entertaining. It was the most saleable. Successful Never league. has there been ever a league that's, that's been sold for more money to every corner yeah, of the world. The, that's over the last couple of years. It's over the last 10, 10, 10 years, right? No, ever, we're talking about 20 years. Since the inception years. of the Premier League, right. no league has been sold anywhere for more yeah. money. Yeah. Foreign right. A anywhere. Yeah. But that says something about, about it as well. So, of course, being a foreign coach or being a foreign player, looking at the Premier League from a distance and saying, like, okay, this is the intensity that I want to be play playing in. Because the first thing that we always think about when it's the Premier League, the box-to-box -box play. The intensity from going, going forward, backward, forward, well, backward. sort of football Mancini delivered at Manchester City, in fairness. Yeah, but it's with an Italian twist. You know, for yeah. us, was, for us was, was resolve was the number one key. Do you understand? And of course we have the quality, we had the quality of players that we could play football as well. Because it was entertainment football that he would like to play in. But the most, the most important thing was keeping the defense tight and just try to score as many goals as you can. And that was the Italian twist that he gave to it. And that's a foreign manager. But I'm just saying, with the Premier League involved in how it is right now, a lot of players nowadays, they want to come to the, to, to the Premier League. Has that been, has to that enjoy changed? Their, to enjoy their football or to make money? It's both. You make money, of course. I mean, you're not playing football for free. And because you like it, you have to, of course, have, have to have a salary as well into it. And that's just being honest. And the players will tell you the exact same thing. But that's what I said. Football is evolving, not only on the pitch, but outside of the pitch as well. With the deals that, that, the, that the Premier League is making, television rights go so on and so on. So the big money is in, is in England at this stage. So that's why players and, and, players and coaches want to come to the Premier League. Mm. Yeah, why is the big money there? Because it's the most oh, here we go again. in the world, right? The Dutch league. <laughs> oh, the it's the, Dutch the greatest league. league in the world. When? Eh? Early 90s. <laughs> Honestly, no. The Ajax dynasty. Honestly. The Johan Cruyff dynasty. The, the Three 70s. Three years, Cruyff. Sensational. Okay. A sensational. But every era is different. Every era has its typical difference, you know, when it comes down to the 70s, there the we agree 80s, to agree. the 90s. Of course they have. Yes, and the, but the Dutch 2000s. League has never been more entertaining, ever been more watchable no. than either the Football League or the English Premier League, ever. Yeah. But we were better, though. We are better, we are better teams in different eras. Ajax was a better team than United in the early 90s. The, 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 the Ajax from the, from the Johan Cruyff in the early 70s was better than the United in the Arsenals and the, and the Chelsea's. 
Or, or am I wrong? You've always given us a flow of exceptional talent. But if you cared so much about your product, you'd all stay there until your 24th yeah. birthday before you went and earned the money and so, enjoyed your football. At least we got, pro at least we got product. Let's hear, <laughs> let's, hear from Luke, let's hear from Luke Shaw. <laughs> yeah, very good. Very honest. Um, very honest. Don't think that um, VAR is in a position to tell the match day referee that it's a penalty. Do you? No. No. I'm so with Shaw sure on that. The, the, the game shouldn't have stopped. This game shouldn't have stopped. He said it, he said it perfectly, uh, yeah. perfectly clear. Yeah. I mean, why stop the game if you didn't think that it was a penalty or a deliberate handball? Just continue with the flow of the game. And mm. you don't have to stop for every decision where you think there's a small chance of giving a, a for penalty. For me, it wasn't well. intentional. I, I think these are subjective as well. So yeah. uh, Stuart Atwell, who was on the pitch, nearer to it, should have an ultimate say on this. We saw... Of course, you Lee see, Mason yeah, uh, you see, into you terrible see, trouble yesterday you see, with you the AR arms, instruction. You see two arms going to the yes. ball, right? At first, first, uh, first uh, moment we thought both it was Greenwood, right? Yeah. That was it. Of course, we've seen in the replay that it was Odoi's hand that, that touched the ball first. Not everything but was in the deliberate. Box is, no, but was it deliberate? It's not deliberate. There's yeah, no so intent there. There's no intent there. Of course, it's a hand. Is his arm in an unusual position? Not really. No. He's steadying himself. Exactly. So I, I think Stuart Atwell came to the right decision. But Luke Shaw's right. Why let the referee yeah. go in and see see the see the see the situation again? Just let the let the let the game go on. Yeah. Here we go. No penalty. Categoric. <laughs> Categoric. I'm with you with fans. I, I, I mean, we all of us. The sooner the better. We want fans back, yeah. and maybe that will create an intensity that that, that we're missing at the moment. But. Yeah. I mean, too many of these matches are letting us down, and, and it's they're really many. disappointing. Really, really disappointing. Very disappointing. Uh, let's have a look at how Inter got on today. Uh, the Chinese owners of Inter have sold the team that they sold. They've Do you think we deserve more? Sure. I think it was right, to be honest. We don't have many, many chances today. We don't create much. Uh, I think both teams defended really well today. Not many chances, so... I think the, the, the draw is fine, but if we want to, to do something good, we want to win trophies and win the league, we have to beat these this teams. Was it the, the, the final ball that was lacking today? We had some fairly good counter-attacking opportunities. But just the pass was just the, the, what we, we missed today. We, we create good counter-attacks, but at the end, the last, the last pass it wasn't the, the best option. But yeah, we need to... At least we defend really well today. We don't have many chances, just a couple of good chances. But the team was strong today. We gave, we gave everything today and it wasn't enough, to be honest. You didn't have a lot to do, but this important save from Ziyech, I think, at the start of the second half. Yeah, yeah, it was a big one. Uh, especially in this moment of the game, we have a big chance. Uh, I had the team with the save, so I'm, I'm really happy. I uh, feel really well and, yeah. Like I, I said before, we need to do to do more. It's not enough. If we want to to win trophies. Are you frustrated that uh, didn't get the penalty in the first half when the referee went to the screen? You always think, oh, we might yeah. get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when I saw the, the referee goes went to the to the TV to check the penalty, yeah, I thought it was a, a penalty. To be honest, I think someone said it was a handball, so I didn't see it, but probably was a penalty. But this is football. This is the VAR, everything. So now let's be focused on Crystal Palace. I suppose that's all we can do. We can't stop City, obviously, winning. So is that all we can do? Win the next to see what happens? Yeah, win the next and then we play against them. So let's see if we can beat them and we can be closer to them because now they are winning games, they are playing well. And now the gap is, is bigger, so it's not easy. It's not easy, but this is Premier League. We want to give everything until the last game and fight, fight to be, to be as, as high as I can, we can. That's 20 Premier League away games unbeaten more than a year, which takes some doing, but I guess you're more concerned about victories, aren't you? Yeah, to be honest, that's unbelievable to be 20 unbeatable games away from, from home, especially Premier League, always difficult. So I think it's something to be proud of the team, the, the whole team. So let's keep going. Let's, let's be focused on Crystal Palace and, and let's, let's go there and try to win. Thanks, David. Thank Cheers. you.